Today is December 26, 2023. I received a word from the Lord at 3.12 p.m. this afternoon. Um, for this particular word, the Lord wanted me to summarize what I was reading earlier. It's going to be Daniel. This was Daniel chapter 4, starting at verses 19 through 27, but he wants me to summarize it. So basically, uh, Daniel is a man of God who, um, not by any might or power of his, his, his own, but by the Spirit of God, is able to interpret dreams. And so he's called forth by King Nebuchadnezzar, who has this dream, and he wants to know exactly what does it mean. And so Daniel was called forward to interpret this dream. And as he's um, interpreting the dream, he explains to the king that the things that he has seen are pertaining to something that's going to happen to him. Um, and the reason why it's going to happen to him, he explains, is because his heart became high and lifted up. His heart became high and lifted up. He became prideful. He became arrogant. And he forgot that God is the true promoter. And that the only reason he was king to begin with is because the Lord put him in that position. So um, just to give you an idea of how the conversation goes i'm going to read this last part to you where it says and inasmuch as they gave the command to leave the stump and roots of the tree your kingdom shall be assured to you after you come to know that heaven rules so it also goes on to say that even though judgment is about to come upon him for getting so high and mighty within himself and thinking much higher of himself than he ought to. But by the mercy of God, um, he's not going to take his kingdom away. He's just going to go through a season where at the end of that season, he will understand who rules and who reigns. Before I begin, I encourage each and every one of you to test the spirit. Number one, that means that you're going to take this back to the Lord in your own personal prayer time. You're going to meditate on his holy word like the Bible says to do day and night. And at some point, you're going to ask him, Lord, did this word come from you? Was it coming from your spirit or another spirit? Will you please confirm or deny? And he will speak to you through his word to let you know where the word came from and if there's anything else that you need to know going forward. This is what the Lord said. Pride, pride, pride comes before a fall and haughtiness before destruction. I despise haughty eyes for who are you, O oh man, to look down on another this has become a cultural norm with many falling victim to its clutches. Your self-righteousness is a stench. What righteousness you have that I have not given you? Your boasting is not good. You have become puffed up in your own minds, sure of yourselves, sure of your abilities. You can bear no fruit apart from me. What can you do without my spirit of grace? Yet you are full of yourselves. O oh, high and lofty one, I shall bring you down. Those of you who have forgotten me, who glory in yourselves, who accept the praise due to my name, who are they worshiping, me or you? Were you there when I laid the foundations of the earth or when my spirit hovered over the deep, when the earth was formless and void? Can you turn a single one of your hairs black or white, where does the light go when it becomes night? Tell me if you know. O oh, mighty man who has forgotten where your strength comes from, I strengthen the feeble knees. I give might to them who have no strength. I perfect my power in weakness. It is I who do these things. I give life and I take it away. I give grace to the humble, but resist the proud. I despise your arrogant words, for out of the abundance of the heart your mouth speaks, and your mouths boast great things. 
But he who glories should glory in the Lord your God. It is I only you should praise. So why are you praising yourselves? It is not by might or by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. You must decrease for me to increase. I tear down the high and lofty ones and exalt the humble. Pay attention to your speech. Be wary of your words. Keep a guard over your lips. Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of its abundance the mouth speaks. He who makes his boast should boast in the Lord. Humble yourselves, O high and mighty man, or I will swiftly and surely humble you. Thus saith the faithful and true, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, your everlasting Father. He wants me to share with you all of the confirmations that I received and anything that he said during them. So he told me to finish what I was watching for the, the first confirmation, which I received. So I was watching a video earlier. It was by Todd White. I'm going to mention it again towards the end of this. Um, but in the video, it's talking about life and death being in the power of the tongue. Um, how no man can tame the tongue. The tongue cannot be tamed. Uh, the tongue has to be fixed by... Uh, the grace and truth of Jesus Christ and out of the abundance of your heart, the mouth speaks. He literally just said all of these things within the first 10 minutes of me watching this video. Then the Lord took me to Jonah 3, 8. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily to God. Yes, let everyone turn from his evil way and from the violence that is in his hands. Joel 1.14 Consecrate a fast. Call a sacred assembly. Gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord your God and cry out to the Lord. Habakkuk 1.4-5 Behold the proud his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Indeed, because he transgresses by wine, he is a proud man, and he does not stay at home, because he enlarges his desire as hell, and he is like death and cannot be satisfied. He gathers to himself all nations and heaps up for himself all peoples. Psalm 12, 1 to 4. Help, Lord, for the godly man ceases. For the faithful disappear from among the sons of men. They speak idly, every one with his neighbor. With flattering lips and a double heart they speak. May the Lord cut off all flattering lips and the tongues that speak proud things. Who have said with our tongue we will prevail. Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? Then he took me to Titus Three, I apologize, I didn't write the, down the verse. Remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities, to obey, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to be peaceable, gentle, showing all humility to all men. Joshua 24, 14 to 16. Now, therefore, fear the Lord, serve him in sincerity and truth, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the Jordan River and in Egypt. As I was reading that, I said, what gods, Lord? And he said, pride is worship of self. Serve the Lord. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the river or the God of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Proverbs 27, 2, let another man praise you and not your own mouth, a stranger and not your own lips. Then I heard the words, there's a way that seems right to a man. But before I had a chance to look up this Bible verse, my eyes landed on Proverbs 26, 12. Do you see a man wise in his own eyes? There is more hope for a fool than for him. Then when I went to pull up the Bible verse, I was led to click on this particular list 
and he gave me the following. Galatians 6, 3. For anyone thinks he is something when he is not, anyone who thinks he is something, sorry, I apologize. When he is nothing, he deceives himself. Proverbs 16, 9. The heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. Proverbs 12, 15. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but a wise man listens to advice. Proverbs 21, 2. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the heart. He wants me to end with Proverbs 14, 12. There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way to death. I will tell you this, when I continued watching the video, and I will tell you um, what it was. So it was by Todd White. It was titled, Giving Everything for Jesus. I was about two minutes into where I had left off in the video. And he said, and I quote, you are living in a way that seems right to a man. The next topic was gossip, slander, talking about who hurt or who offended us, leaving a church because no one talked to you on the first day, criticism, slander, putting people down, and complaining. All of these are an indicator of pride in our hearts, which is why we take offense in the first place.